On the night of June 13, 2014, Pavlo Nikonov called his father to say that he was flying to Luhansk. This was the last conversation between them. Nikonov had just turned 24 years old. He had plans to finish his studies and then to set up his own business. But when the young man received a draft notice, he eagerly signed up for the war. When hostilities started in eastern Ukraine, his words were the following, I gave an oath to the people of Ukraine, I will not stay at home. On approach to land at Luhansk International Airport, the plane he was on was shot down. None of the 49 people who were on board survived. There's shelling. You can see it on the right. Visually. I have a visual. Don't slow down. This is a real model of the IL-76 military transport aircraft. It weighs about 150 tons. An officer of the general staff, Viktor Shidluk, says it would be impossible to survive falling from such a height. It was shot down at the height of about 600 meters. There were no chances to survive. Shidluk is a member of the group that conducts the study of the defense of Luhansk airport. At the time, 150 Ukrainian defenders were on the ground and completely surrounded by militants. They were without food or ammunition. Three military transport planes were sent as backup. The first aircraft landed quickly, even without landing lights. It was a surprise for Ukrainian military defending the Luhansk airport. So to say, it almost fell from the sky. The second plane turned on the landing lights and flew towards the airport. Militants started firing at the second plane using machine guns. One of the rockets launched from a manned portable air defense system hit the aircraft's engine. Later, the state security service published the negotiations of the militants. Comrade Major, two planes entered airspace. One has been shot down. The second has landed. We have no more rockets. Other rockets failed to fire. Nonetheless, one plane was shot down. The third aircraft was able to fly away. Petro Stuzhuk is convinced that the IL-76 was shot down by professional Russian military men. He's a teacher at the National Defense University of Ukraine. Stuzhuk says that it could not have been done by a man who never used a rocket launcher. The first launch missed. Most likely the crew saw the firing and took certain maneuvers, but the next rocket hit the engine. However, it should be noted that if one engine of such an aircraft fails, it does not mean that it will lose control. It could make a successful landing. However, based on the data of the investigation, after the rocket hit the engine, it was finally destroyed by artillery and small arms fire. The Ukrainian military believes that the aircraft became an easy target because pilots did not turn off lights during the landing. However, a lawyer who represents the interests of relatives of victims in court suggested that the pilots could not turn off the lights since the airport did not illuminate the runway. There are people who shot down the aircraft, and as well, there are people who did not take measures to ensure its safe landing. They knew since the beginning of June. Since that time, there was no electricity. They flew at their own risk. A diesel generator was put into operation before the aircraft landed. The military prosecutor's office accused General Viktor Nazarov, who at the time of the tragedy headed the anti-terrorist operation headquarters, of duty negligence. According to the investigation, he knew about a possible terrorist attack, but still sent the aircraft out. In March 2017, the court found him guilty and sentenced him to seven years in prison. However, Nazarov filed an appeal and obtained a second examination of the case. Results are expected to be received in a few months. Meanwhile, in February this year, a Dnipro city court ruled to make the accused defendants, militants Plotnitsky, Gureyev and Patrushev, to appear in the court. Ale Chabonenko is a member of a group of psychologists who offered his assistance immediately after he learned about the tragedy. Since then, he's worked to bring mourning families together to support one another. An identification procedure took much time. It lasted more than 40 days. Expectations and hesitations exhausted everyone. There was a message from several families that it would be nice to get acquainted all together because their children died on one flight. And we had an idea to get them acquainted. They became a big family. They support each other. The Family Circle organization has grown to include relatives of other people killed in the area of hostilities. Pavlo Nikonov's father says that now the most important task for them is to achieve the status of defenders of Ukraine for all those who were killed in the east. We probably have the largest organization in Ukraine. We are engaged in raising money for the military. Well, you know, the majority of parents, widows, no one gives up. We continue the struggle to have our children remembered. On this anniversary of the tragedy, psychologist Oleg Chabonenko proposes that everyone change their cover photo on Facebook to a photo of all those who were killed in the aircraft crash with hashtag 49 for at least a few days.